Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Rick with Techspin and we have a great show for you today. Uh, super excited today. My Amazon shipment finally came in last week. So I got the Captain 240EX water cooling units. These are AIO water coolers and they have a 240 millimeter radiator. Uh, these units also sell under the Deep Cool brand on Amazon. And so today I'll be showing you the install for both of these. I'm gonna be putting the red one into my red uh, Sadie's Horus case. And all the white one here is going to go into the Sadie's Tutan Common case that I reviewed a few videos back. So sit back and enjoy this build log. I needed to upgrade both my media and workstation PCs, so I picked up two of the GamerStorm Captain all-in-one water coolers. I got one 240 in white and another 240 in red. These radiators also go by the deep cool branding on some online retail sites like Amazon. Let's open the box and look what we've got. Included are two 120mm white fans. Next is the CPU pump, already connected to the long radiator. Then the triangular fan hub. And finally, the instructions and mounting hardware. The red version is very similar, starting with the two 120mm red fans. I was smarter here as I left on the protective plastic base. It's there to save the nicely applied thermal paste on the underside of the CPU pump. Then the fan hub and instructions and mounting hardware. They branded the backs of the fans nicely. I really appreciate their attention to detail in this area. A side view of the CPU pump connectors, they do rotate just a little. I really like the glass loop coming out of the top, although glass does mean that you need to take extra care during installation. The paint job on both the radiators is very well done, something Captain Falcon would be proud of. Time for the install. First I realized on both my cases, the back plate cutout isn't big enough to access all four screw holes, so I had to remove the motherboard completely. Doing this in a mid-sized tower case meant I also had to remove the bottom fans completely in order to take out the board. I didn't do a pre-install, I just recorded as I did it, so I cut a bunch of footage throughout to speed things up. Okay, so I've removed the fan wiring finally and disconnected the 24-pin ATX cable carefully. With the tower out of the way, I can put together the mounting plate and bolts. There are two positions. The inner one is used for 1150, 51, 55, and 56 sockets. The outer position is used for 1366 sockets. Also note that these coolers can be used on the AM2 and AM3 boards, and evidently there is a extra piece or something that you can get for AM4. I haven't looked into that yet, but that's something you might want to check out. Anyways, just put the bolts into the right holes and test fit through the motherboard. They should go through easily. Next, I install the spacing nuts on top of each screw. This creates a post for the mounting bridges to rest on. Now I'm putting on the mounting bridges. Be careful that they don't rest on any components on the board. You don't want to fry anything. The fastening nuts go on top of the bridges. Time to put the titanium board inside. Overall I found the install to go smoothly and it wasn't hard, just took a little thought to plan out what I was going to do. I likely would have had an easier time in a larger case and a super easy install in a case with a full CPU backplate cutout. I'm moving the extra wiring out of the way to make installation easier. This part can be a little tricky as you don't want that glass CPU pump swinging around and also you need to be careful of the thermal paste so that it doesn't go everywhere. I decided I'd secure the pump first. It didn't really feel like it was on the CPU, but it was. I guess I'm just too used to those giant heat sinks. With the pump secured, it's time to attach the radiator to the front of the case. I chose to mount it like this so that with my front three RGB fans and the two GamerStorm fans, I'm running a push-pull configuration. Then time to attach the included fans on the radiator. Don't forget to like this video. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when the next video is ready. 
Lastly, the CPU pump wires plug into the motherboard CPU header. Now for me, I had some trouble getting that CPU pump light LED to come on, and I figured out that the cause was that in the board's BIOS, my CPU fan was on the default setting of PWM, or power managed. Once I took it off that and put it on normal, it came right on, so it needs to have full juice going to the pump. The radiator tubing is a slightly flexible rubber with a weave cover. It feels sturdy and should last a long time, as long as you don't pull on it hard. It resists kinking also, which is nice. This board has a pump header, which I'll be plugging the pump fan triangle header into. If your motherboard doesn't have this, a case fan header should work just fine. Even better if you can monitor the speed through the BIOS. I'm finishing off the screw installation here. I didn't have mounting spots on my red case, so I had to use four for the radiator and two for each fan. Not ideal, but works and looks the same. Here's the front of the white case with the Sadie's RGB Mandala fans installed. You can see the pump has a very nice breathing effect. It's a one color LED. The CPU pump colors on the Captain 240EX match their exterior coloring. So for the CPU pump on the white version, you get a nice white LED. And on the red version, you get a red LED at the heart of the CPU pump. The white fan shrouds catch the light really well. What a great choice. This is the triangle shaped rad fan header with GamerStorm branding. The tubing comes from the CPU pump over the top, just touching the fan shrouds at the middle edge. Luckily the fan blades clear them by half a centimeter. You can see the motherboard temperature sensor here as I'm doing a sustained handbrake encoding test, and the board is hitting about 58 degrees Celsius. This is about 5 degrees better than my Hyper 212X air cooler. Okay, so should you buy one of these all-in-one water cooling units? Considering it's a complete unit with only the CPU hardware assembly required and that wasn't too difficult and costing under $100, it makes a strong argument in its favor for not having a giant heatsink in your computer. With a breathing LED pump light at its heart, the GamerStorm Captain 240EX AIO water cooler gets a 10 on the meter. It really brings new builds up a level and I'm seeing them in top U2 hardware reviewers high-end builds. I'm also giving the Captain 240 a Tech Spin Platinum Award for its incredible features and quality, especially if you get it at the sale price of $80 on Amazon. Really great coolers, and if you get one, you won't regret it. Falcon, Falcon punch, punch that thumbs up button if you like this review. It really helps my channel. Thanks so much. If you want to see more videos like this, then please do subscribe for new content and click that bell icon Show me a moves. to get notified when I put up a new video. I always read the comments, so if you have a question or if I did miss something, then please do and let me know what you'd like to see next. Thank you very much for watching and see you.